Good evening to all. Welcome you all to the daily current affairs session brought to you by Ganesh AS Academy for the date 2nd August 2023 for the news which came in Indian Express newspaper. Okay, let's get into the today's current affairs discussion. First news is government sets fresh target of 60 lakh loans for 63 lakh loan for the street vendors by the year end. What is the content of the news is, right now the Ministry of Housing, has, Housing and Urban Affairs has set a target to disperse the lo loan that is to the 63 lakh beneficiaries by December 2023 that is with the end of this year under the scheme called Pradhan Mandri Street Vendas Atma Nirbhar Nidhi Scheme. That is, this scheme was brought into force during the period of COVID to help the street vendors to restart their business so that they could able to uh, regain their lost livelihood. This is what the aim of the scheme is about. Okay, since the news is related to street vendors, let's first look into what does the street vendors are means and who are they are. They are person who offers goods to public at large, but they do not have the permanent built up structure and their store could be either permanent, uh, sorry, uh, either stationary which will be parked at one place or they will be moving from one place to another according to that time period. So, there are two types of street vendors that is stationary or movable which I said I have said and they are part of the informal section of the economy and they are rightly in the hub uh, they are well positioned to face the face the consumer directly so that uh, in the street vending vendors and the related activities we could able to see a more number of innovations because they are the linking pin and they are, they, are, they are directly facing the consumers and they know the requirement of the consumers and what is the current market trend so that they could able to innovate certain new things in their vending activities which we could able to see while we are going, uh, going through the roadside. And about the scheme that is Pradhan Mandri Street Vendor Satma Nirbha Nidhi scheme under which the 63 new loans is going to be dispersed within the December 2023. This scheme facilitates a collateral free working capital up to 10,000 of one year tenure to help the street vendors to resume their business particularly in urban area and also in peri-urban as well as the rural areas where the urban local body have the jurisdictions. And SIGVI, the Small Industries Development Bank of India is the technical partner for implementation of this scheme. And incentive, certain incentives are given under the scheme. What is the, what are they are? On regular repayment of the loan, an interest subsidy of 7% per annum would be given to the beneficiary through the, through their bank account. Second is, they could able to earn up to earn a cash bag up to 1200 rupees per annum under the prescribed digital transaction. There are some prescriptions through based on which a 1200 rupees per annum will be given to the uh, 
beneficiaries if the prescriptions are correctly met. What the prescription is? There are certain activities which needed to be taken taken through digital mode. For example, digital transactions. If the street vendors are doing that activities and they are meeting the undertakings which is prescribed, means they could be able to earn a cashback of thousand two hundred rupees and an eligibility for if the if they are repaying the loan perfectly, uh, if they are repaying the loan on on the time as well as they are meeting the prescribed digital transaction requirement which the scheme stresses about means they will be eligible for the enhanced credit of uh, enhanced credit which will be given in the second phase of the under the scheme. So, there will be three phases, the, uh, the, the scheme will be giving credit, will give credit in three phases. The first phase, there will be maximum amount of people will be covered and based upon the eligibility criteria, that is if they are, if they have repaid the loan on time and they have prescribed to the, the digital transaction requirement which the scheme is. Uh, stresses means those people will also will be for example 10 people are covered means in the second phase for the same amount of loan disbursement out of the 10 people 3 or 5 people will be eligible and the third phase if there are certain requirements like this and if the persons are again meeting the certain requirement means they will also be covered under the third phase. Third phase means the third, the loan will, uh, the loan that is, will uh, that will be dispersed under the scheme. So, if they are meeting the two criterias and what are the eligibility criterias for a person to get benefited under the scheme is, a street vendor need to possess a certificate of vending or identity card issued by the, their corresponding urban local bodies. and Sometimes a vendor who have been notified under the survey but not have been issued certificate or the license means, license or identity card means, he could also the, he could also apply for the scheme. Third is the street vendors left out of the urban local bodies identification survey or who have started the vending after the completion of survey and have issued letter of recommendation to that effect by the urban local body means that street vendors could also get benefit from the scheme. And the fourth criteria is the vendors of surrounding development, the surrounding areas of the urban cities like peri-urban and rural areas where the jurisdiction of the particular urban local body extends means then those street vending person will also get benefited from the scheme. So, this is what the provisions of the scheme is about and the details of the scheme is about which the government is expanding its coverage so that maximum amount of people could get included in uh, could get benefited under the scheme that is 63 lakh uh, loans should uh, will be getting uh, dispersed within the year end. So, what we needed to study further is we should know about the constitutional provisions related to trade and also we should know about the street vendors protection of livelihood and regulation of street vending act 2014. Then third is we should know about the constitution of urban as well as rural local bodies. The constitutional provisions and the uh, other statutory acts related to the urban as well as rural local bodies we should be aware of. WHO report on tobacco control key finding how India fast that is recently World Health Organization has released a report on tobacco control measures across the globe. It has said that enforcement drive and then putting up of no smoking sign in the public places and also 
creating awareness about the ill effect of the tobacco has resulted in 27 percentage of reduction in smoking in public place across the globe and the prevalence of smoking has reduced from 22.8 percentage in 2007 to 17 percentage in 2021. In 2007, World Health Organization has developed a, M -power, a scheme called M Power Scheme, whose abbreviation stands as M for Monitoring Tobacco Use and Prevention Policy, P for Protect People from Tobacco Smoke, O for Offer Help to Quit Tobacco, W for Warn about the dangers of tobacco, E for Enforce Bans on Tobacco Advertising, R for Raise Tax on Tobacco, tobacco Products. These are all the measures that needed to be implemented under the scheme, which is called as M Power Scheme. As a result of M Power measures, each, each is individual measures all club together will, for, will come under the empower scheme and as a result of empower measures 5.6 billion or 71 percentage of the entire population remain protected by the at least one of those measures which is being implemented across the globe And the number of countries implementing at least one measures that is apart uh, out of the six measures which you have seen uh, in the previous slide, the number of countries implementing at least one measures has increased from 44 in 2008 to 151 in 2022. And what the WHO has said is. Tobacco kills nearly 8.7 million people yearly, out of which 1.3 million are second hand smokers. These second hand smokers are those people who do not have any kind who do not have the habit of smoking, but they will get affected because of the people those who are smoking, like uh, that is the passive smokers. Second hand smoking, that is uh, passive smoking has been linked to almost 4 lakh death due to heart diseases and some 2 lakh 50 thousand death due to chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and some 15 sorry 1 lakh 50 thousand death due to stroke and 1 lakh death due to diabetes. So these deaths have, have been related to second hand smokings and India has the highest level of achievement when it comes to putting health warning label on the tobacco products and tobacco dependence treatment. How India is enforcing is right now 87 percentage of the cigarette packets carrying health warning both on front as well as back. And India is in top 10 countries in terms of the size of health warning in the tobacco, the cigarette packet. The packet contains also contains a toll free number for a quick line. Quitline is a toll free number which helps the person to come out from the tobacco addiction. And India has banned e-cigarette as well as smoking in healthcare and educational institution. And right now, India is working to implement warning sign in the OTT platform, right? Because the OTT platform is easily accessible to not only for the elder people but also for the kids as well as adult people. So, since the reach of the OTT plus platform is very high, it need to be regulated for the uh, obscene scenes like the person uh, using the tobaccos. So, when a person is using tobacco in the, in the movie or web series in the OTT platform means then then a warning signature, a warning sign should be clearly provided in the bottom of the screen. So, India is right now working to implement such kind of warning signs in the OTT platform, which we needed to have a look at it because it could be used as a way forward in any other or recommendation during uh, in our main sensor activity. 
about e-cigarettes since india has banned e-cigarettes by bringing a legislature or sorry an act through a parliament we should know about what is the e-cigarette is about it is a non combustible tobacco product unknown by many such as vapes e-hookahs electronic cigarettes and e pipes and it is a battery operated device it produces aerosol by heating a solution containing a nicotine and it is and it has different other flavors and uh, different other flavors along with the nicotine the, the important chemical being used is glycerol or propylene glycol and the aerosol which is produced by heating a solution will stimulate a cigarette smoke so after a puff that is a, uh, after a puff a particle as well as nicotine is delivered deep into the lungs and it is then absorbed by the blood this is the negative consequence of the e cigarette which many of the sellers are not saying those who are selling the e cigarettes this is what the blame been given by most of the activists and then what is the reason one of the reason why india has banned the e cigarette is it is a very tempting like device because those people those who have those who do not have the habit of smoking also for the had uh, for just for, just for the fun of trying this electronic product they get habituated for the to the e cigarette and uh, uh, habituated to the habit of taking the e cigarettes so this is the main reason why the india has gone to one step ahead to ban the e cigarette outrightly by bringing the legislature in the parliament sorry the uh, legislative act in the parliament so what are all the control measures which is being implemented in india to prevent as well as prohibit the use of tobacco products in india first is cigarettes act 1975 it mandates display of statutory health warnings in advertisements as well as cigarette packages second cigarette and other tobacco products prohibition of advertisement and regulation of trade commerce production supply and distribution act 2003 that is copta it also aims to provide smoke free public places and also places restriction on tobacco advertising and promotion and prohibition of electronic cigarette act this is the act which i have mentioned while explaining the e cigarette in the previous slide it prohibits the production manufacturing import export transport sale distribution storage and advertisement of e cigarettes this is the third another control measures and tobacco quit line service quit line services as i said is it is a toll free number to help those people those who have those who have been addicted to the, to the tobacco products and the national health policy 2017 it sets an ambition target of reducing tobacco use by 30% by 2025 and ratification of who framework on convention on tobacco control india has ratified it so that india has become a stakeholder in tobacco control measures that is taking that the who is taking at the global level national tobacco control program under ministry of health and family welfare is to bring awareness about the harmful effect of the tobacco use as well as the tobacco control laws so these are all the initiatives or control measures being implemented in india to prevent prohibit usage of tobacco in india so what we needed to study further is we should know, study about 
non communicable diseases what are all the different types of non communicable diseases that is present in india and what are all the schemes programs policies been implemented to prevent the non communicable diseases in india because the usage of tobacco is the main reason for the most of the non communicable diseases that is right now increasing across india not only in india across the globe so we should know about what is the non communicable diseases in india and what are all the different schemes policies programs been implemented to prevent the non communicable diseases in india second is we should know about the tobacco cultivation in india third is we should know about the structure function as well as the objective of the world health organization itself so these are all the other peripheral areas which we needed to know apart from the details which we have seen in the previous slide what is carbon capture and storage cut emission uk government has affirmed its support to project of capture as well as store the carbon dioxide in their country and as a part of it britain is going to invest a huge amount of 25.7 billion over the over next 20 years in the carbon capture and store technology so this is what the news is about so what is the carbon capture and storage is about it is a technique to reduce the carbon present in the atmosphere there are two types of carbon capture and storage what is they are the point of source type and the direct air capture type under the point of source type the car, uh, carbon capture and storage will capture the carbon dioxide produced at the store for example in smoke tax smoke stack it is one of it is the important source for the carbon emission so from the source itself we could able to capture the carbon dioxide and then separate it from the other gas particles and then store in the store the those carbon dioxide separately and second is direct air capture that is removing the carbon dioxide that is already present in the atmosphere these are all the two types of carbon capture as well as storage technology and once the carbon dioxide has been separated from other gases means it needed to be compressed and it has to be transport to the storage facility it will be taking uh, taken place mostly via the tunnel and from the storage facility it needed to be buried under the ground which is some many kilometers down the earth crust so that it could get uh, அது அதனால என்ன ஆகும்னா அது சில கல் அந்த கிரஸ்ட் கீழே இருக்க இடிபாடு கடையில வந்து அது வந்து பர்மனண்டாவே அங்கேயே ஸ்டோர் ஆகி அங்கே இருந்துடும் ஸோ வாட் வி நீட் டு ஸ்டடி ஃபர்தர் இஸ் அபார்ட் ஃப்ரம் த கார்பன் கேப்சர் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் ஸ்டோரேஜ் டெக்னிக் விச் வி ஹவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் அபவுட் வி ஷுட் நோ அபவுட் the paris deal which the, uh, the global countries has signed in 2015 to reduce the impact of climate change second is we should know about india's panchamrit panchamrit commitment to united nation framework for convention on climate change and we should know about what is the circular economy is about and what is the life mission which is initiated by government of india
and we should know about fossil fuel uses in India. Fifth is we should know about forest survey report in India. So, these are all the other peripheral areas which we needed to have a look upon. Eighty eight percentage of two thousand rupees banknote in circulation has been written to banks according to the report by RBI. After the RBI announced that the two thousand rupees note needed to be submitted back to the bank which the public holds during uh, during the period of May. As a result of which nearly 88 percentage of the total uh, 2000 rupees notes which is in circulation have been returned to the bank and of the received notes 87 percentage of it have been deposited and 13 percentage have been exchanged for other denominations. So, about note, sorry, note withdrawal, 2000 rupees note have been introduced in India during 2016 after the withdrawal of 500 and 1000 rupees note. And the objective of its introduction is to meet the immediate, immediate cash requirement during that point of time in, an, in the Indian economy. And with the fulfillment of this objective as well as the adequate stock of other denomination and also the 2000 rupees note is no longer commonly used and fourth reason is in the pursuance of the clean note policy the RBI has taken this decision of withdrawing the 2000 rupees note from the circulation. So what is the clean note policy uh, is about in pursuance of which the, the note has been withdrawn. It is the focus on providing public with currency notes and coins that have enhanced security features. Features Since the 2000 rupees note has been introduced in India before 5 years, it has become so old that it needed to be taken back and refreshed and add the new security feature to it and then get recirculated after some point time. If, uh, after sometimes if the government authorizes it. So, this is the main reason because it has uh, become so old that is why the RBI has withdrawn the 2000 rupees note and it has provision to withdraw soiled or old note from circulations and it has instructions to common public, public also. What is that is people should not stable the banknotes and then they should not write or put put a rubber stamp or any other mark on the banknotes and the banknotes need to be stored safely to prevent any kind of damage. These are all the instruction being given under the policy to the common public. So, what is this soiled as well as mutilated notice? It means a note which becomes dirty due to usage as in the case of 2000 rupees notes because it is uh, it is become so old because it has been introduced more than 5 years ago and also includes a two piece note pasted together wherein both the piece represent the same note. And in the case of mutilated note means it is a bank it is a bank note of which a portion is missing or which is composed of more than two pieces. A soiled note means a old note or the note which is toned into two pieces. A mutilated note means it is a note where either a portion of for example in this note means the, the portion either got missed or it got toned into different parts.
So, this is called as mutilated note. And the soil node can be deposited in any, uh, any bank branches. But in the case of mutilated node, uh, it is only the specific bank branches which is notified by the RBI will be collecting the rose notes. And the value of the mutilated node will be reduced depending upon the size of the largest toned available pieces which the node holds. In the case of soil note means if you are giving the 50 rupees soil note to the bank means they will be giving you the giving you back the, the new 50 rupees notes. But in the case of mutilated notes means they will not uh, if you are giving the 50 rupees mutilated note means they will not be giving the, the 50 rupees new note. Instead they will be reduce certain values based, uh, uh, based on the tone or the feature loss of the particular note which we are which we are giving to the bank. So, what we needed to study further is we should know about what is the demonetization is about. Second is we should know about the RBI Act 1934 and also we should know about the RBI's functions. Fourth is we should know about the currency printing in India which are all the mint or the places where the currency is being printed in India. These are all the other things which we needed to know apart from the details which we have seen in the previous slides. Sharp skew in national big cat map. 20 percentage of the tiger area as less than 1 percentage of the tiger population. So, According to the All India Tiger Census report which has been released recently, there has been increase in the amount of tigers that is present in India. That is, tiger, a number of tigers has been increased to 3682 from 2967 in 2018. But from the broader perspective, the numbers signals a positive sign. But when you are digging one step deeper into the details, we are, uh, there is some warning signals arising from the report. What it is, is, is the 16 tiger reserves in India which occupies nearly one fifth of the tiger area has only 25 tigers in it which is very pathetic. On the other hand, the top uh, 16 reserves in terms of tiger population holds 45 percentage of the Indian tigers. On the one hand, there is overflow of population in the area and on the other hand, there is underflow of tiger population in the another area. So, this imbalance could lead to reduction in gen genetic losses because if there are some reserves where only one tiger is present and that tiger, if it is died means that genetic loss will not get uh, will not uh, it is very difficult to replace the genetic loss with, uh, of the particular tiger and also if the tiger has been wiped out from the particular ecosystems means the function it for the, the tiger performs certain function in the ecosystem and if the tiger is has been wiped out from the ecosystems means then the ecosystem suffers a major loss so these are all the impact of tiger loss in particular area. Even if we are reintroducing a new tiger in those particular area means those tigers which are present earlier uh, uh, belong uh, on, on the on the tiger in the genetic loss on the reintroduce on a tiger uh, because those tigers are born and bought up on the uh, on that land only. They have been habituated to grow in the land the in, and, the, in the, and the corresponding ecosystem. So, their uh, genetics will be tuned with those ecosystems, soils and the surroundings. Reason for reduction in tiger in those reserves are land fragmentation, lacks in the management or enforcement, poor protection, loss of prey waste. These are all the major risk, major 
um, reasons being quoted by the report for the reduction in the tiger reserves. So, let us discuss about what is the tiger reserves, uh, tiger census is about. It is a national level census being done every 4 years by the National Tiger Conservation Authority. The census uses a double sampling method that is they will be testing a particular test the particular result two times so that the result could be acceptable the data that is the da results means data the data could be acceptable how they are using the double sampling method is first they will be checking the tiger population using the ground based survey and then matching those result with the images captured from the camera traps so they will be so if the number of tigers that has been identified from the ground based survey if is it is equal to the image obtained from the camera traps means then the result is acceptable if there is any kind of dilemma or mismatch means then it will be leading to again doing the survey earlier the pug mark of the tigers were used to, to count for the tiger census but uh, that uh, you know, identifying the number of tigers using the pug mark has led to many miscalculation as well as redundancy and wastage of the resources so they are now using double sampling method of ground based survey and images from image track The first tiger census took place in 2006 with the report which is released recently totally 5 tigers, uh, tiger census report have been released. So let us discuss about the project tiger. To ensure the maintenance of viable population of the tiger in India for scientific, economic, aesthetic, cultural and ecological values, these kind of values her tiger holds. If the tiger is, has been wiped out from the particular ecosystem means the scientific, economic, aesthetic, cultural and ecological value will be lost once and for all. It is a centrally sponsored scheme under the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. National Tiger Conservation Authority is implementing authority which is headquartered in New Delhi. So, what? Who is the National Tiger Cons uh, Conservation Authorities and what power or objective under which it is formed. It is established under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Environment Minister is the chairperson for it and Ministry of State for Environment is the vice chairperson for it and it has three other member of parliaments and the secretary to the Ministry of Environment is also part of the, mem uh, part of the National Tiger Conservation Authority. And it supervises and act and coordinates and approves the tiger conservation plan prepared by the state governments. Till now, 54 tiger reserves are in India, and Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve is the first tiger reserve in India. And what we needed to study further is we should know about the tiger its, a, its characteristic feature and the uh, areas or the environment that is very suitable for the growth healthy growth of the tiger we should know second is we should know about wildlife protection act 1972 third is we should know about project cheetah as well as project elephant and we should know about the national park as well as the wildlife sanctuary and what is the difference between the national park as well as those the wildlife sanctuary. Okay. Let us discuss about UPSC prelims question which was asked in relation to the news which we have seen in the previous slides. In the context of mitigating the impending global warming due to anthro anthropogenic emission of carbon dioxide which of the following can be the potential site for carbon sequestration. Abandoned and uneconomic coal seams, yes, it could be used for, to store the carbon dioxide which is captured. 
either from the source or from the atmosphere. And depleted oil and gas reservoirs could also be used to store the carbon dioxide. Third is the subterranean deep saline formation, which I have said during uh, while explaining the carbon capture store. That is, after capturing as well as storing the carbon dioxide in the particular area, uh, these carbon dioxide needed to get deep deep into the uh, crustal formation, and they need to be buried once and for all there itself. So, the subterranean deep saline formation is also correct answer, correct statement. So. The correct answer is 1, 2 and 3, option D. The term M strikes is sometimes seen in news in the context of captive breeding of wildlife fauna, no. Maintenance of tiger reserve will hold an indigenous satellite navigation system, no. Security of national highway, no. So, the answer is maintenance of tiger reserve. UPSC mains question. Women empowerment in India needs gender budgeting. What are the requirements? and status of gen gender budgeting in Indian context. 10 mark question. I want those students, those who are watching the current session online, please do comment answer point for the uh, main question which we are seeing right now on the board. So that we could able to know the viewpoints of each other and we could able to enrich our own points so that we could able to grow as a whole. Please do comment answer point for the main question which you are seeing right now on the board. Thank you students. Please do comment, like as well as subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will be receiving the daily current affairs session notification and any other important news that will be brought to you in the future by the Ganesh Ayas Academy. Thank you.